up to this point, you now know how to use most of the features of uh, Scene Terrain. But that doesn't mean that your work as an artist is done, because having a terrain with uh, the trees and the shape you want, and the populations you want, the forests, the water, and everything set up by default, such as the materials or uh, the scale or the textures, etc. All of that doesn't mean that your render will look realistic or nice or beautiful or uh, it may, uh, but uh, there are a few things to, to consider and this is what we're going to, to be looking at. Okay, so uh, the first and most important thing to make your terrain more realistic is the lighting. And by default, if you uh, just generated and prepared your terrain, and if you choose a point of, point of view like this, for example, I mean, any kind of point of view will do, but for this example, I do, I'll put the camera here. And if I render this uh, scene, what I get is this kind of result. So I have my elements in place, but this doesn't look nice because there, there is the most important thing missing and it's the lighting. The lighting and the surrounding environment that will give the uh, final color of your scene. For example, if you want a day scene or a night scene, if you want uh, the weather to be cloudy or clear. All right, so depending on the conditions you want uh, your scene to be in, uh, you have to choose where the light com comes from, the intensity, the color, and all of that is not easy if you try to reproduce by hand with uh, if you you could add for instance a uh, a lamp uh, like a sun you can try to rotate it but then you have to play with the strength of the sun its color depending on the the hour of the day or the weather condition and then even if you add a, a sun you don't have the background, the world background will still be a plain color. And the most, the easiest way is to use what we did before. You can use, for instance, scene skies. You have a selection of skies and more will be added uh, in the future. Or you can use any other kind of uh, environment map like these, if you have your own. But uh, since you have seen skies, the easiest way is to choose the sky you want. Let's choose a, an environment with a ground, like this one for instance. Click set sky and now if I render it again, now in, I, I have automatically a realistic lighting and a background. Okay, This looks much better, we have reflections in the water, we can see uh, even though this render is very small and with a very and very few samples, there are only 20 samples per, per pixel uh, here, like this. So uh, I'm making it pretty low, so we can s iterate very quickly. <clears throat> but if we increase this uh, number of samples, we would see better reflections, more precise trees and, and uh, shadows. And th this looks better than before. Okay, so actually let's 
use this uh, slot feature and compare each uh, the result with each uh, improvement we are adding. So if I revert back to the old world, I do a render. This is the boring gray world we had before. Okay. And now if I switch to slot two and I use the Sin Skies world, I render it. And also notice that you can choose different weather conditions and different times of the day and uh, the lighting will be realistic by default. You have nothing else to do and this is pretty useful. Right, so if I switch between those two renders we can Im immediately see the improvement. I'm going to change the point of view because the background, I mean our terrain in the foreground, uh, it's obvious that it's not uh, taken from the same point of view, the same angle as the background. So let me uh, put the camera down a bit and look up to the sky like, like this. Yeah, that's not too bad. Also, if you have a if you have a, a large terrain, it's not the case here. The case here it's a, a small it's a small one, but if you have a large one, you can also play with the lens of the camera, and you can make it uh, wide uh, wide uh, having a wide. Uh, how do you say small small focal length means we have a very wide point of view and that gives a more dramatic and impressive uh, feeling to this to the scene your terrain looks bigger and you have more perspective and you see more of the scene so that means uh, you can uh, you can put a lot more stuff in the in the render if that's what you're looking for But for this one, let's keep it at 30 or 35 by default Okay If I render this So what I'm trying to to do here is uh, I'm going to blend uh, the the foreground, the 3D terrain, with the background. So I think it, this angle is okay. We could even go down even further and look up even further as well. Also remember the basic rules of composition, like uh, the rules of thirds this this is the most basic one but one which I keep in mind all the time and you can see like uh, for instance you can see the thirds here the horizon line should be uh, at uh, this line about this line or this line these are not hard and hard rules of course but they're good good uh, advice to follow for pleasant uh, renders okay I prefer I, I think this point of view is good enough I forgot to go to slot 3 so let's go to slot 3 we're going to add one last very important thing to our render and this is the atmosphere usually we don't have to we don't think about it in in, uh, in in i mean in our everyday life but we can see it everywhere in action and when it's missing in a cg render 
um, I mean, like this in this picture, there is no atmosphere, and it's screaming fake. All right. So, as you can see, the three D terrain in the foreground is just put like that, boom, on you know, on the background world, and it's just like it's cut. You know, it's cutting the picture in two. And this is ugly. So normally, when an object is is uh, far far away from the camera or the eye, and it's very far, it becomes it, it's, it tends to blend with the sky or the color of the atmosphere. During the day, the atmosphere is bluish, uh, kind of light blue. So we can see, for instance, this mountain is blending with the atmosphere and this one a bit less because it's closer to us and this one less and this one even even less and this effect is due to the to the fact that the light coming from far away objects the light has to cross more air you know, the atmosphere is a lot more thick uh, so it the, the light uh, is I mean, it's taking the color of the atmosphere. And closer objects like this mountain, the light coming from it has less air to cross and thus has, uh, uh, is less affected by this blending effect. So we're going to add this effect on our 3D terrain. Okay, so to add our atmosphere, we're not going to add some some kind of volume or anything like that. I'm going to use the compositor. So I switch I switch to it and let's see how we can we can achieve the effect we want. I'm going to uh, I want uh, the render result and I'm going on slot three. We are going to use two new passes, the mist pass and the environment pass. And because we are using the mist pass, we have to change its settings here. So it's starting at zero and the depth, the depth should be the distance between uh, the camera and the farthest point on the 3D terrain. So right here, I would say, it's about 15. Okay. And the fall off, I prefer the linear one. It gives a stronger effect. Okay. Now that we have uh, our new passes enabled, we have to re-render the scene because otherwise the passes will just be uh, blank. There won't be any data in them. So re-render the scene. Like this. And now our new passes are ready to be used. First, I'm going to add a mix node like this. And the factor will be the mist pass. Here we go. So we can see the mist pass in action using a plain white Color. Uh, now I want the back, the environment background uh, where it's completely white. So I add another mix node like this, and I mix it with the environment. And it should be only where the mist pass is completely white. Okay, so I use a Converter color ramp. I plug the mist pass here and I use the output here. So now I can control uh, the blending effect. And this is useful mostly to avoid the 
as we'll see, and there can be pixels that are not affected by the atmosphere effect, and this is annoying. So the color ramp will allow for uh, for a more gradual progression right at the end, at the edge of the terrain. So if I choose a color like uh, like this. Okay, for the atmosphere and let's make it less thick using a math node that I plug here. I want to divide the mist pass like that. I, I want it less strong. And immediately we can see that the result is much better than before. Okay, so if I like that, if you see black parts like this, that means you have to go closer here to the end. And as you see here, if, if I don't use the color ramp, the kind of ugly effect I was talking about is this one. Okay, so the borders of the terrain have the this color here, the color of the atmosphere. And this is not what we want. We want, we want it to blend nicely with the background. So we have to use the color ramp. I want to move this, oops, this one. Well, this one like that. Okay. And this looks much better. This is the effect we want. Now, if I, if I toggle the atmosphere on and off using the slots, we can see that it's adding a lot of realism to our render. So remember always to use this kind of node setup to add an atmosphere for your terrains. And that's it for this tutorial series about Synterrain. You now know how to use most of its features if you have questions, uh, have a look at the uh, online manual when it's ready. You can also send me an email and ask anything you, you want to know. If you make really nice renders and you're happy with, the, with the, what you're achieving, I will be very happy to, to see uh, what's you, what, you can, what you can do with it. So have fun and see you next time. Bye.